Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Juni, and today I'm going to share with you a notebook review about this journal from Melodies. I've been looking for a notebook that can handle watercolor. Then I found out about this Reverie. The owners Cynthia and Simon kindly sent me this notebook to try out, but they won't affect what I'm going to say in this video. And I'll share my honest opinion about the features I love and the parts that can be improved. So, if you're interested in watercolor bullet journal, now let's take a look together. The package comes with this eco-friendly reusable box. And by the way, the French word "reverie" means daydream in English, which is pretty cute in my opinion. Inside of it, there's a card. On the front, it explains the word "reverie" in English, and on the back, it is a handwritten thank you letter in postcard format. And now let's move on to the notebook. There are two color options. What I got is coral pink, and the other option is blue lavender. The cover is using vegan leather, bronzing with gold letters, and on the book band there are more information of it, which I'll go through one by one later. And on the back, it has the brand name. It comes with a rubber closure and no pen holder. First of all, let's talk about the size. There's only one size option, which is A5. But it is slightly bigger than the other brand, so here I use Archer and Olive and Notebook Therapy as reference to show you the difference. The tear color with B on it is from Archer and Olive, and the pink one with Cherry Blossom is from Notebook Therapy. As you can see, there are a little bit difference on both width and length, and it's about half centimeter bigger. But you won't really feel the difference while using. The second thing is the number of pages. Reverie has 160 pages, but because it's using watercolor paper, it is way thicker than the middle one I'm showing here, which is also 160 pages. The one on the top has 176 pages, and it's still thinner than the Reverie. By the way, all of them are using 160 GSM paper, but of course, watercolor paper width is a little bit different from the others. Okay, it's time to take a look at the inside. On the first page, it has the notebook name "Reverie" on it, with the definition below, followed by three lines for writing down your name and other information. Then it jumps right into the data page. As I mentioned earlier, there are 160 GSM watercolor paper, and there are 160 pages. On the back, you can see the pattern continue here, and there's also a back pocket. I personally found it really useful, especially during a trip to carry some stickers with me. It also comes with two ribbon bookmarks in this light beige orangeish color. And here's a closer look of the paper. The dots are five millimeter apart, and they're in brownish color, I'll say, instead of black or gray. And the watercolor paper texture is pretty obvious from this distance. But not all the pages have it because there is back and front difference in watercolor paper. Unless regular paper, you can make both sides the same. In terms of writing experience, I actually tried on both sides, and there's not much difference. And you see how it looks like in the later pen test. I'll also get into more details about the watercolor paper in a second, but first I want to mention one thing I noticed immediately when I opened it. Unlike most of the lay flat notebook, this one cannot lay flat by itself. Even though it also used the 180 degree lay flat binding style, due to the thickness of the paper, I think it's not working easily. So I'll suggest you to use big binder clip on two sides while using. But I'm hoping it can get better as I use it more often in the future. Before doing the pen test, one more comparison I want to show you. Here I put three notebooks together from top to bottom. They're Reverie, Archer and Olive, and Notebook Therapy. There is some color difference as you can see. And honestly, it is normal for notebook paper to have this slightly yellow tone, so it doesn't bother me at all. But I think it could be a thing you want to pay attention to if you have super high requirement of the whiteness. Okay, now it's time to try out the paper. I'm going to use the last page as example and also do a watercolor painting to fully test out how well it can handle watercolor. But of course, I'll start with regular pen testing. Because one of the things I'm curious about is how smooth it is with regular liner pen. I tried Pigma Micro O1 and O3, Pigma Graphic One, Tombow Fudunasaki Brush Pen, Leme Fountain Pen, Zebra Sarasa, and Uniball Gel Pen for the writing part. 
It's definitely a different experience compared to、uh, a regular notebook because of the texture. It doesn't feel hard in terms of continuing writing, but the friction is definitely more than on smooth paper. It is still better than expected because I saw the bumpy texture could cause some trouble for writing. Overall, it's not bad at all. The next I want to test is color markers, Crayola Super Tips, Arteza Real Brush, Tombow Dual Brush Pen, and acrylic markers. One thing I noticed is that because the paper is not coated, it absorbs the pigment pretty well, so it may turn a little bit darker than on the other paper for the same pen. It will be better to make a color palette on this paper or test out the markers you want to use before applying it in your bullet journal drawing. As for gouache, it's very similar to acrylic pens, and since it's more opaque type of pigment, it usually works fine on any on 60 GSM paper. And finally, for watercolor, first I simply test out how it would be with decent amount of water to do a fade out, and then I do a color gradient from orange to yellow. Because the paper can hold water for decent amount of time, it's pretty easy to blend the pigment. I tried other 160 GSM watercolor paper before, so here I expect it should survive the next test, which is wet on wet. Just to be clear, I'm not a professional artist, and I started doing watercolor as my hobby, so I'm not really systematically educated. But I did learn some technique here and there while practicing. So for this review, I'm just sharing my own experience and opinion. Definitely not a professional watercolor paper test. Just for bullet journal lovers who are interested in applying watercolor in your journal. And now let's have a closer look of the result. In the front, you can see there's no feathering except some marker could be darker than it looks like, and the watercolor part is pretty good, keeps the vivid color as it should be. Then on the back, no bleed through except a colic marker, which is expected. The watercolor part does get wrinkled a little bit for the part where I use a lot of water, and here's how it looks like after totally dry. I'll say for regular watercolor drawing with not too much water, it's perfectly fine. But of course, some wrinkles are inevitable because it requires heavier paper, which I'll show you in a second. But before that, one thing I want to quickly mention is that you may see tiny bit of ghosting on the part I use thick black pen or darker pigment, but it's only shown under strong light. People have different standard for ghosting, and for me, this is not a big deal. But some of you may not accept it. You can barely see it here, but I think I should let you know. Now let's come back to the paper quality. Unfortunately, I don't have 160 GSM watercolor paper with me anymore, but I do have 300 GSM, which is 140 pounds paper, and I think it could be a good reference here. One is from Kansan, and one's from Arteza. With almost double of the thickness, the 300 GSM paper can handle more water for sure, but I don't think it's a good fit to be bundled into a 160 pages notebook. If you want to practice watercolor only, I would probably suggest you to go with these paper pads. For me, I use it to make my stickers, and usually it doesn't bend or wrinkle. But again, we're doing a notebook review here. I don't want to be so strict about that, and I think overall I'm satisfied with how much it can handle watercolor. In order to help you to get a fully understanding, I'm also going to draw something here with watercolor, inspired by the leaves pattern on the first and last page of this notebook. Plus, I just came back from Hawaii, as some of you may know, my super daily honeymoon. I'm also going to draw the Hawaii flower hibiscus here. This is not a flower tutorial video, of course, but I'm going to quickly explain what I'm trying to do here and my personal thoughts about it. I started with quite some water with light. Purplish pink as the base, then a darker pink in the center. Also, some orange on the petal to give it some color variety. As you can see, the pigment merge pretty well. And before the petal get fully dried, I keep adding more dark pink on the edge, so there is some shade difference. Let's wait for a little bit longer before adding more details, and now move on to the other flowers. For the next two, I change the color to orange and peach. But same technique as well as for the leaves. As I'm drawing here, let's talk about the price and shaping. Melody is based in France, so the price is in euro, which is 24, roughly equal to 29 US dollar. And for shaping, it varies based on where you are, as well as the delivery time. 
Here are the information from the website. For example, shipping to my location, which is US, will take 10 days and the shipping fee is gonna be 16 euro. I'll leave the link in the description if you wanna take a look. With all the information shared, I want to talk about what I think about this notebook. If you watched my Plan With Me video for the past few months, you'll probably notice that I mainly use watercolor in my bullet journal this year. And I was searching around to find one made with watercolor paper for a while. So overall, this notebook meets my expectation, but of course, there are parts not perfect and can be improved as I mentioned earlier. If I want to give suggestion to you, then it would be for some of you who draw a lot with watercolor or want to try it in your bullet journal, then this could be a good one. I actually talked to some friends in Buju community who are heavily drawing in their bullet journal, and some of them also expressed that it would be great if the paper can handle watercolor better. I'll still be searching for watercolor paper bullet journal notebook in the future, but for now, I'm pretty happy with this one. But of course, if you mainly use brush pen or just write a lot with fine liner pen, you can go with a different option. And now I want to share this satisfying peeling process with you. By the way, I'm in a filial relationship with Melody, so if you do want to purchase this notebook, remember to use the link down below or my coupon code JUNISUN10 to get 10% off while I also get some commission fee. It's a woman's situation and I really appreciate it. At the end, let me quickly show you the back of the drawing. I just finished painting and it's not fully dry yet, so the bumpy is there. But considering the amount of water and layers of pigment I used, it's not bad. So yeah, that's all I want to share with you today. I hope this review is helpful if you are also looking for a notebook for your second half year bullet journal or just want to get an art journal for some writing and watercoloring. Personally, I'm still struggling which notebook to choose for my next one, and I also have other notebook review videos in my channel, check it out if you need it. Feel free to leave comments if you have any question about it that I didn't mention in this video, and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!